construct new non-linear spaces using a non-linear space, namely the quotient space. So you might be knowing about the uh, subspaces of a vector space. And uh, if you have a vector space, then by using its subspaces, you can construct new vector spaces, namely the quotient spaces or factor spaces. So let me define first of all what is the meaning of uh, subspace. Okay. So what is the meaning of subspace? So let X be a vector space or linear space. over k a field okay so you can write in general a subset or a non empty subset m of x is a subspace if and only if actually this is a theorem if and only if alpha x plus beta y belongs to m for all alpha beta in f in k and all x and y in f so meaning is that if this is x and this is your m right x and y is here and alpha and beta are any two scalars then the meaning is like this okay so meaning is that this will be a subspace if this condition holds right okay so uh, actually if we define a relation on x namely uh, equivalence relation so then that equivalent relation will partition the set x into disjoint equivalence classes so there is a very beautiful result a fundamental theorem on equivalence relation that if on any set you define an equivalence relation then that equivalence relation partitions the set partitions the set means into disjoint equivalence classes conversely if you have a partition of the set then there is an equivalence relation whose equivalence classes are the partitioned subsets of that set okay so i'm not going into that there is a um, this is this theorem is called fundamental theorem on equivalence relation so you may see any book so first of all let us define let m be a subspace of a linear space x okay consider a relation on x by x is related to y if and only if x belongs to m okay so this is the uh, definition so we prove that this is an equivalence relation actually so number 1 x minus x is equal to zero vector which is always in m why because m is a subspace right so this implies that x is related to x for all x in x that is the relation is equal uh, reflex second if you take x is related to y this means x minus y belongs to m and this implies minus of y minus x we can write like this because x minus y but you know if a uh, negative of any vector if any vector is there then its negative is also there so this implies that this implies that uh, y minus x y minus x also belongs to m and therefore y is related to x so what you proved you proved that uh, whenever x is related to y then y is related to x so the relation is symmetric also now we proved that our relation is transitive also number 3 if we take like this uh, suppose x is related to y y is related to z this implies x minus y belongs to m and y minus z belongs to m so what you have you have that 
Okay. So we have this. Okay. So what do you have? X minus Y belongs to M. So Y minus Z belongs to M. And therefore, X minus Y plus Y minus Z also belongs to M because M is a subspace. And this implies that uh, X minus Z belongs to M. And therefore, X is related to Z. Right? So what you proved? You proved that this is transitive. And therefore, all the three uh, conditions are satisfied of equivalence relation. Okay? So you know that an equivalence relation is nothing but it is a relation having three uh, components. One is reflexive, then symmetric, and then transitive. So all these three combinedly called equivalence relation. Okay? And therefore, this is an uh, equivalence relation. Is not it? Is an equivalence relation. And because it's an equivalent relation, this equivalence relation partitions the state acts into disjointed. So this relation partitions equivalence relation partitions X into disjoint equivalence classes. And the set of all equivalence classes will be denoted by the set of all equivalence classes denoted by X by M. Okay, X by M. And let us see what is the X by M. Let us find out what is x by m. If this is an equivalence class, then what is that equivalence class? What is the meaning of this? Actually, this is your set x, suppose. Okay, this is your set x, right? Then what you are going to do? You are going to do that. This is x. So in this x, you defined an equivalence relation that partitions the set into disjoint equivalence classes. So for example, your classes, a primary school can be decomposed into five classes. First class, class two, class three, class four, class five, right? So similarly, this can be partitioned into disjoint equivalence classes. So if someone is studying in class one cannot uh, a study in class 2, in class 3, in class 4, in class 5, right? You are studying in MSc third sim. That means you cannot enter in BSc second. They are mutually exclusive. So this is the partition of the set, right? Okay. So what is the equivalence class? So for example, in your class, the uh, relation is, equivalence relation is class fellow relation. So the same thing is here also, right? What is the thing? The thing is that, I'm sorry, I should choose this one. The thing is that the equivalence class of X is, equivalence class X is equal to X in X such that, I'm sorry, Y in X such that Y is related to X. What does it mean? It means uh, all the elements Y in X such that y minus x belongs to m right that is this is nothing but y such that y minus x that is some element suppose m in m right so what you have you have that uh, y is equal to x plus m such that m in m right so this is nothing but your famous coset of M by X. You know that, right? So actually this relation partitions the linear space X into disjoint cosets, right? So in fact, the set of all such equivalence classes, so the set of all such equivalence classes, that is X plus M such that, 
you have to see your vector image. So whatever the equivalence classes are, means x plus m is a coset, then y plus m is a coset. So the distinct cosets, the collection is denoted by, this is denoted by x by m and is called cosent, okay? Cosent is space of x by m or factor space. It is also called factor space of x by the subspace m, right? So, uh, how to make it is a vector space? In fact, the mapping, in fact, this mapping, okay, which mapping? That is x goes to x plus m. This defines a mapping from into x by m is called canonical mapping because it's a natural mapping because it's a natural mapping okay so it's called canonical mapping of x onto x by m because this map is onto right onto uh, sorry for this Okay, x of x uh, onto x by m, right? So we now introduce, we now introduce operations on x by m by defining in this way x plus m is a coset y plus m is a coset defined as x plus y plus m right Similarly, if alpha is any scalar in K and uh, X plus M is a coset, means the equivalence class defined in that way, right? Defined in this, this call is defined as alpha into X plus M, alpha into X plus M is defined as alpha X plus M, okay? So you can verify that these two operations are uh, bell defined. One is called vector addition, another one is scalar multiplication. So, actually, we must prove that these are bell defined. Means this x plus m and y plus m, x plus m plus y plus m is equal to x plus y plus m. Meaning is that, uh, see, for a coset, this x is not important. If x plus m, suppose here, uh, for example, here, right, if x plus m suppose this is the coset x plus m okay suppose I'm sorry this this is your x plus m so if this coset is x plus m so uh, if you take any element y here then it is y plus m okay for example you are studying in msc third msc third semester that's mean uh, the class of the class fellows of a the class of A is the same as class of B. If A and B are studying in the same class. So first of all, we prove that the operations are well defined. So let us prove. So we prove that the operations are well defined. Okay. So first of all, we prove operations are well defined. Well defined. Meaning is that suppose x plus m is the same as x dash plus m. Okay. And suppose y plus m is the same as y dash plus m. What we need to show? We need to show that adding these x plus m and y plus m is the same as adding this uh, x dash plus m. Okay. This x dash plus m and y dash plus m. 
okay so these are the same thing no problem okay sir you take this one and this one simultaneously adding these two elements is the same as adding the first two elements that is x plus m and y plus m okay Hello, sir now if you take x plus m is equal to x dash plus m then what does it imply if and only if x minus x dash belongs to m is not it it is very simple to prove why it is simple to prove because x plus m is equal to x dash plus m this means this means x plus small m is equal to x dash plus small m dash the x plus m the elements of m are the members of m right so x plus m means you have to add the vector x to every element of the vector m uh, vector of m similarly x dash plus m means the vector x dash is to be added to every vector of the subspace m so this is a set like Uh, first is the x plus m, second is x dash plus m dash. So what is x minus x dash? X minus x dash is m dash minus m. M and m dash both are the elements of this m and m dash. Both are the element of right. So uh, let me take this one. Okay, let me raise this first. Okay. Okay, fine. what i'm saying i'm saying that uh, x minus x dash belongs to m why this is happening because x plus m belongs to m so x plus m must be equal to x dash plus m dash for some m and m dash because the set x plus m is equal to x dash plus m dash means the elements in x plus m is the same as the elements in x dash plus m the element of x plus m will be like x plus m And the element of uh, uh, x dash plus m will be like x dash plus m dash. So this, of course, implies that. What does it imply? It implies that x minus x dash is equal to m dash minus m. But you know, m and m dash, this m and m dash, both are the elements of m, and a m is a subspace. Therefore, this element belongs to m. That means. x minus x dash belongs to m so this is an ag concept okay so this is an ag concept that uh, x minus so the problem is because uh, it is online teaching you know so x minus x dash belongs to m is good fine okay similarly because uh, y minus i will take another pen because y minus hello sir okay minus sir rohit add nahi ho pa raha y dash uh, uh, y minus y dash also belongs to m right similarly because uh, y plus m is equal to y so x minus x dash belongs to m plus y minus y dash belongs to m so both the are elements both are elements of uh, m so this belong so what you have x plus x plus x x plus y minus x dash plus y dash belongs to m and again by definition x plus y plus m is the same as x dash plus y dash plus m so what we have shown we have shown that we have shown that uh, this implies that x plus m plus y plus m is the same as x dash plus m plus y dash plus m that is it is independent of the elements it is independent of the representative that is if you replace the representative x plus m is a coset this is the same coset uh, here uh, this is the same coset x dash plus m but here it is represented by the x element it is represented by the x dash element but both are same 
so that's mean the addition is well defined in the sense if you uh, if your representations are different the sum is not different sum will be same so that's why this is well defined that is the unique element okay aisa nahi hai ki aapne agar representative ko badal diya to sum dusra aa jayega aisa nahi hai okay fine similarly you can prove that our scalar multiplication is also well defined i will also prove this okay don't worry again the same thing because alpha belongs to alpha belongs to k and uh, by the rule x minus x dash belongs to m so therefore alpha times x minus x dash belongs to m and therefore by the scalar multiplication rule this belongs to m that is alpha x plus m is the same as alpha x dash plus m that is by the scalar multiplication rule alpha x plus m is the same as alpha x dash plus m so what we proved we proved that our relation our operations are well defined on x by m so it is a good exercise for you you just prove it with these operations with these operations on x by m what is x by m set of all the cosets is is a vector space over the field uh, say k right so we are not going into that we are not going to prove this one okay so what we prove we prove that to make this as a non linear space that is if x is a non linear space how to make x by m a non linear space that is how to define the norm on x by m okay how to define norm on x by m so this is a theorem the theorem says that theorem says that suppose okay suppose what is the theorem so theorem says like this let so theorem is uh let x be a norm linear space right over a field k of course k is either r or the field of complex number c right either it is r or the field of complex number c okay let x by m is x plus m such that x belongs to x with the quotient is this with the quotient is this of x by m then for m plus x or x plus m in uh, x by m norm m plus x or norm x plus m is equal to infimum norm of x plus m such that m belongs to m defines a norm on x by m okay so this actually defines a norm on x by m so how to prove this okay so how to prove this so let us prove this one fine so i am going to the next phase okay so you need to prove the four properties that is is non negative the positive homogeneity is there triangle inequality there and the 
vector norm is zero if and only if the vector is zero. Okay. So first of all, let us prove the first result. That is, it is a greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So how to prove this? Uh, okay, fine. So how to prove this? Since for m plus x in x by m. Norm of m plus x is equal to infimum. M belongs to m. Norm x plus m. Actually, I have written here norm m plus x. So you can write x plus m or m plus x because x by m is abelian group. You know, with respect to addition. Okay. So uh, because x is an abelian group, so with respect to addition, so either you write m plus x or x plus m. So both the concepts are same, right? Okay, so uh, this number is always bigger than or equal to zero. Why? The reason is m is not empty. If it is empty, then its infimum is plus infinity, even right. So because m is not empty, that means zero vector is there at least. So norm x is always bigger than or equal to zero, isn't it? Because if m is zero. Then norm x plus m is just norm x, and norm x is bigger than or equal to zero. So this is bigger than or equal to zero. So first criteria is fulfilled. Okay, that is this is uh, the first criteria is fulfilled. That this is non-negative real number. So this defines a non-negative real. Number. Now second, second you need to prove that alpha times x plus m, its norm must be Is equal to mod alpha norm of x plus m, right? For all alpha in k and for all x in x, that is x plus m. I'm sorry. So let me try this. For all alpha, okay. So here, yeah. For all alpha in K and for all x in X, okay. So how to prove this? So um, actually, if alpha is zero, say alpha is zero, then what about the right hand side? So right hand side will be zero into some number x plus m. So obviously this is zero. And what about LHS? Left hand side will be uh, norm of alpha is zero into x plus m, right? And this is nothing but by the scalar multiplication rule. What is this? So this is equal to norm of uh, zero into x plus m by the definition of scalar multiplication. To the cosine, and you know, multiplying zero to any vector gives you the zero vector. Zero vector plus m. Zero vector plus m means just norm of m, and norm of m means infimum norm m such that m belongs to m. Is not it? And what is this? What should be the infimum of this? You know, norm is always bigger than or equal to zero. So minimum value is always bigger than or equal to zero. So is zero there? Can you take zero for the infimum here? Yes, of course we can take. The reason is because zero vector is there. So you have infimum as the zero since zero vector belongs to M and norm of zero vector is zero, right? So that's all. So we can take here zero. So what you proved that is therefore left hand side is equal to right hand side in this case. So assume that alpha is not zero. So if alpha is not zero, then what is going to happen? It's going to happen that norm of alpha times x plus m is equal to Norm of alpha x plus m 
this is equal to infimum norm of alpha x plus m such that m belongs to m m uh, belongs to m this is equal to infimum m belongs to m i can write here norm alpha x is already there right plus uh let me write here let me write here alpha m here i am writing alpha m is not it what is the problem because m belongs to m so alpha is non zero so alpha m also belongs to m so will be same the reason is m belongs to m if and only if alpha m belongs to m for all alpha non zero because if alpha is non zero then you can divide by alpha so it is m belongs to m so alpha m belongs to m by scalar multiplication you can multiply by 1 by alpha so you can prove both the things okay so m belongs to m is the same as alpha m belongs to m right the reason is because alpha is non zero if alpha is zero then it is a problem right if alpha is zero then it is a problem otherwise it's not so it belongs to uh, because this is not equal to zero so because alpha is not zero so alpha m belongs to m is the same as m that is this is nothing but we can write like this is equal to uh, norm alpha then x plus m okay what i am writing where i am writing what is not written oh sorry 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 stay some stay some oh sorry okay so i am writing here so this is equal to infimum uh, m belongs to m and here we can write norm alpha x plus m again you must note that in the this line you have alpha m belongs to m and in this line m belongs to m so both the infimum are same because already i have given the reason here okay so what is the reason reason is given that uh, this is the reason okay so this reason is given here that is m belongs to m is the same as alpha m belongs to m and alpha m belongs to m is the same as m belongs to m so i can write like this so because let me add one more page because this is equal to m belongs to m infimum of mod alpha shall be taken outside norm x plus m you know that uh, in supremum and infimum adding the positive real number does not affect to the infimum or supremum of the set so you can take it outside mod alpha then infimum uh, m belongs to m and norm of x plus m and this is nothing but mod alpha into norm of x plus m by definition so you have proved that uh, scalar multiplication that is norm alpha x is mod alpha norm x okay now third that is the triangle inequality so how to prove the triangle inequality so let us prove this uh that is norm x plus m plus y plus m is the less than or equal to norm of x plus m this coset plus y plus m this coset okay <clears throat> so how to prove this here it is plus okay this is plus okay so this is this is this is okay yeah this is plus right so how to prove this see uh actually we have 
we have norm m plus x by definition is infimum of norm m plus x m belongs to m right is it okay so you know uh, because this numbers this norm m plus x right these numbers these numbers m plus x this number i'm talking about this number if you vary m then you have many non negative real numbers for m1 and the real number for m2 plus x norm m2 plus x and the number norm m3 plus x and the number because m is this there are infinitely many m may be if m is non zero right so what about this so you know uh there is a criterion of sequential criterion that's mean if you have a set of real number and its uh, infimum is something then there is a sequence in that set which converges to that infimum. if this is a subset of a real number and its supremum is this then there is a sequence in that set which converges to that real number so this is the criterion so you can understand that okay so let us prove this therefore there is a sequence mn because the sequence of non negative real number is determined by changing the number sum so it is m n okay this now why it is happening Okay, so there is a sequence m n n is equal to one to infinity such that this is is the problem. Okay, uh, in m such that such that this uh, norm x plus m n converges to infimum. that is norm x plus m converges to this one as n tends to infinity okay similarly there is a sequence m and s in m such that norm of m n s plus y converges to norm m plus y r y plus m as n tends to infinity okay so let me add another page fine now norm of m plus x or x plus m plus y plus m this is equal to x plus y plus m right and of course by the definition of uh, norm of this is infimum m belongs to m and norm x plus y plus m right that is this is less than or equal to in particular if you replace x plus y if replace the element m by a particular element mn plus mn s because mn and mn s both are the members of m so this is true this is less than or equal to for all n bigger than or equal to 1 is not it for all n bigger than or equal to so
what we see uh by triangle inequality this is less than or equal to norm of x plus mn and plus norm of y plus mn dash is not it right now this is true for all n this is true for all n bigger than or equal to 1 so taking the limit so therefore norm of x plus m plus y plus m is less than or equal to limit n tends to infinity norm x plus m n and then plus limit uh, n tends to infinity in fact you can write like this plus the norm of y plus mn dash right like this so then you can distribute this limit okay so you just distribute this limit by the definition right so this is equal to limit n tends to infinity norm x plus mn and then plus limit n tends to infinity norm of y plus mn dash now this converges to norm of x plus m and the limit of this that is this sequence converges to y plus m so what you proved so we have proved that norm of x plus m and uh, y plus m the sum of these two norm is always less than or equal to norm x plus m plus norm y plus m okay y plus m so we prove the fourth uh what do you need to prove uh, let yeah here let m be a closed sub space of x of x then you need to let okay x by m is this be the quotient space of x by m then for x plus m belonging to x by m okay belonging to x by m this defines a norm on x so it is necessary that m must be closed otherwise we cannot prove the equality result okay so let us come to here okay fine so let me choose the green pen now yeah fourth so what is the fourth condition fourth condition is that norm of x plus m is zero if and only if uh the vector x is what zero the vector x is zero r x belongs to m what you should write huh you should write x belongs to m the meaning is that if and only if x plus m is zero of zero of x by m and what is zero of x by m zero of x by m is just m vector right so you need to prove that it is m vector that is just m okay so if and only if m plus x is m right so that is x plus m is zero norm of x plus m is zero if and only if this vector this coset x by m is the zero coset that is m you have to prove right uh okay so you need to put two ways suppose if x plus m is m then this implies norm of x plus m is the same as norm of m and you know that norm of m means infimum norm m 
and in minimum norm mam of course it is zero because zero vector is there so you have the zero vector not it you have the zero zero is there right conversely conversely assume that norm of x plus m is zero by definition that is infimum norm x plus m such that m is in m is zero so there is a sequence mn n is equal to 1 to infinity in m such that norm of x plus mn converges to zero right norm of x plus mn converges to zero and therefore therefore x plus mn converges to zero in x therefore x plus mn in fact you can write minus zero vector like this converges to zero scalar as n tends to infinity theek okay? hai so what you see you see that this vector converges to zero vector so that is x plus mn converges to zero vector right as n tends to infinity but uh, you know x is not going to change that's mean mn tends to minus x right because addition is continuous addition is continuous so that's why this is happening because if mn is converges to minus x then x plus mn converges to x minus x that is zero If x plus m n converges to zero vector, then adding both the sides minus x minus x plus x is zero vector. So you are left with m n converges to minus. Now, how to show that this minus x, this minus x belongs to m, right? Our aim is what? Our aim is x plus m is m. So x plus m is m. If and only if x belongs to m, is not it? So you need to prove that x belongs to m. so for this take another page for this uh since mn belongs to m and uh, m is closed this implies limit n tends to infinity mn is equal to minus x belongs to m if m is closed okay here we are here and uh, mn belongs to m and m is closed so what does it imply it imply that uh, it imply that this implies that limit n tends to infinity mn is belongs to m because m is closed so if uh, you have any sequence which converges to somewhere then that limit must be in within m so minus x must be in m so this implies this implies x belongs to m because negative of minus x is plus x and therefore x plus m is just m right so we have proved hence we have proved that uh hence x by m is a non linear space under the above norm okay so we are done today in next uh you may remark also here what is the remark remark is that if m is not closed m not closed 
then x by m need not be need not be a norm linear space under the norm under norm need not be a norm norm linear space under the above norm under the above norm okay so you can prove this not going to this so proof is an exercise for you to do this